Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we magnify you, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Jesus, I 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I wonder if anybody would like to go up on Wednesday night and praise the Lord. Are you ready to go up? Let's take it up a notch. What do you say? Shout yes! I like messing with the devil every day. Bible says neither give place to the devil. When your mouth is quiet and you all stove up and shut up and tightened up, you're giving place to the devil. He can't handle a praiser. Well, glory. I said he can't handle a praiser. That's a good time to start praising when somebody says something like that. He can't handle me. Not tonight, devil. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm thankful that somehow over the years, God birthed in me the attitude of not today, devil. I ain't messing with you. I ain't listening to what you say. Get quiet. You can go on and play. That helps me out. Thank you. Need a little, need a little backup there. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. God's good. Anybody got the victory tonight? Good, good. If you got it, that means the devil doesn't. Hallelujah. God be the glory. We're thankful tonight for our guests. So glad that. Robert and Diane are here. God bless you. Welcome to you. Welcome to the Pentecostals. So glad you are here with Raymond. Raymond and, and uh, Robert going to be baptized in Jesus' name tonight. To God be the glory for that. So thankful for them being here. Amen. Good to see Darren. Glad you're here tonight. God bless you. Welcome. So good to see you tonight. God is good. Lewis. Good to see you, Lewis. Keep on keeping on, brother. God's got something special. Hallelujah. God is good. Now, so glad to have our friends and family with us here tonight. And that is evangelist, pastor, church worker, Aaron Adams, and his wife, Camille, and my brother, David. Smith and his wife Carlin and Mikhail and Cece and Grant are they're, they're helping the Merrimans over there do that. So why don't you get around and introduce yourself to somebody. Smile, pep in your step, mint in your mouth. Smile on your face. Tell somebody you look good in the house tonight. 
Jeff, tell somebody you look good in the house. to your seat. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14, New Living Translation. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will, say I will, share in all that belongs to Christ. Say I will, share in all that belongs to Christ. I read that verse and the thought that came to my mind is, the first part of it says if we're faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly and my mind went back to some offerings that I sowed in faith and after a while the return didn't come as I thought it would or when I thought it would and maybe I didn't hold as firmly to my faith in that seed as I did when it first was given but he comes on the backside and says if you believe you're going to Sharing everything that belongs to Jesus. You know what belongs to Jesus? Everything. So you got two messages right there. You just choose whichever one you want. But the most important thing is to obey the voice of God. If he tells you to give $2, then don't give three. And don't give one, give two. If he tells you to give a thousand, then don't give a hundred, give a thousand. If he tells you to give a million, then don't give a hundred thousand, give a million. If he tells you to give twenty, don't give you five, give you twenty. All right? Now I already proved to you many times God speaks to sinners. Saul was a sinner, God spoke to him. I was a sinner, God spoke to me. So he'll speak to anybody who's going to listen tonight. And if you want to receive the blessing of God, and you'll listen and obey. So let's lift our hands to Jesus right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are faithful. And my faith in you has not wavered. I trust you today just like I did 31 years ago. I thank you because every promise is mine. As I read today, Lord, Caleb waited 45 years for a promise. And you brought it to pass. He said, I'm taking this mountain because God said it's mine. So, Lord, you speak to us tonight, and whatever you speak, that's what we're going to obey. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Bless you, and you may be seated. Our ushers are waiting to, ready to serve you. If you have need of a tithe and offering envelope, raise your hand, wave them down, shout hallelujah, say come here, uh, chase them down and tackle them. No, I don't do that. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. 
Anybody know what's going on Saturday? No, no, no. Does everybody else know what's going on Saturday? Does anybody know what's going on Saturday? Where's my help on the screen so they can know what's going on Saturday? There you go. Anybody know what's going on Saturday? Y'all are slow tonight. I'm telling you, you're gonna have to get up. We got two, we got three, we got three preachers here, maybe four, and we might recruit a few more. So <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you. <laughs> All the ladies remember Sister Carlin Smith. Yes. <laughs> Talking about some baggage y'all been carrying around or something. I don't know. Everybody say outreach. No, no, no. Say outreach. Saturday. We go on this Saturday. We're going to assist our bus ministry teams, and uh, we're going to follow their instructions. So bus captains, be ready. Have a plan. We're going to help you. We're going to fill those buses up. I just, it just, I joys my heart to see come in every seat full in Jesus name so let's do that that'll be this week and then next week next Saturday everybody know what's going on next Saturday do you have that do you have that does you have that where's Jason you have that milk and bread oh it's the 28 what's two weeks did you have that no okay well I saw it today 28 we're going to do our community outreach of milk and bread so we're going to need about 100 to 120 people for outreach and you do it every time we do it so make plans on your calendar for that 28th. Everybody say Sunday morning 10 a.m. Evangelist Aaron Adams. Everybody say Sunday night 6 p.m. Evangelist Aaron Adams. Everybody say next Wednesday February 19th Pastor Sam Emery Hallelujah. Everybody say Sunday, February 26th, Pastor Watts. <laughs> I like preaching here. I'm telling you what right now. All right. Are you ready? Everybody ready to give? Everybody heard from the Lord, ready to obey? Please keep the Jones family in your prayers for the passing of uh, their daughter. I had the privilege to serve in their uh, her, uh, memorial service yesterday. Brother Morgan today served for the Miller family and the passing of their uncle. And so uh, time is here. And also remember uh, Roy and Keisha, his, his father passed away. They come usually on Sunday morning and sit right over here. Uh, you'll remember when you see them. So uh, <clears throat> this is very odd for this church because we're so young. We don't have that many funerals. But let's, let's just stand and pray for these families right now and the loss and grief. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see the grief and sorrow that pains hearts and lost loved ones. But we know that you're in control. So we ask you today to speak peace into their lives, comfort them in a time of sorrow and grief. Let the peace of God have rule and reign in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Everybody said amen. amen. Now, y'all know it's too quiet in here for me to be even halfway comfortable. I, I, I didn't look at the calendar and see that it's Wednesday. I thought it was Sunday night. Hallelujah. Anybody got a praise on a Wednesday night? Well, I got some good news. The Bible says Jesus loves a cheerful giver. That word cheerful is hilario in the Greek, and it means hilarious. So I wonder who could bring an offering to the Lord today with a little bit of praise. Okay, bring it with a lot of praise. Go on, bring your gift to the Lord.
I say in Jesus' name. I say revival through trouble. full of that much power thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I'm so glad uh, those that don't remember Brother Adams preached for us the Sunday morning of our missions conference so they have been here before and uh, we're excited for them to be back with us in this season and so thankful to uh, have the Smith family with us uh, the, those that kind of new around here don't get nervous Jesus will have his way. And I want you to let your guard down. Don't be nervous. We won't be here all night. I promise you'll be home by midnight. Well, I can't promise that because we're just kidding. You won't have to stay any longer. But I promise you, if you will let your guard down, if you will open your spirit, open your ears and hear what the Spirit's saying to the church, you'll leave here tonight different. You'll leave here tonight stronger, more powerful, and victorious. If you believe that, would you clap your hands to the Lord? The band is Aaron Adams. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you lift your hands to the Lord and would you just worship him for a moment? I felt his presence come into this place. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. It's good to be here tonight with you in service. And thank you so much to Pastor Watts and Sister Watts for allowing us to be here and inviting us to be here. And uh, don't you love your pastor and his wife? Amen. Amen. They are some of the hardest working people I know. Amen. Amen. They're not sitting around wasting any time. They stay busy. They stay busy. You got to catch them. They're on the run. We had to track them down today. Amen. And we're thankful to be here. So glad to be in service with you. Glad to have my father-in-law and mother-in-law and all these other in-laws here. Outlaws. Now, y'all know I have to be kind of crazy to marry into this family. So y'all just, <laughs> y'all just bear with me and uh, we're going to have church and the Lord is going to move and people are going to be touched tonight. God's going to do something for somebody. Amen. Amen. If you've come with a need, you've come to the right place. If you've come with problems, you've come to the right place. If you don't have it all together, you're in the right place tonight. This place is designed for people that have problems. This place is designed for people that don't have it all together. Amen. My God works for people that don't have it all together. He, he said the, the well, the heal, they have no need of a, of a physician. They don't need a doctor. He said it's those that are unwell that need a doctor. It's those that have problems that need a doctor. If you've come with a problem, the doctor's here. If you come with an infirmity, the doctor's here. The physician is in the house. Oh, hallelujah. Matter of fact, if you've got problems, why don't you clap your hands so your neighbor will know you're not alive and they know they're not alone. I think that's 100%. Don't you feel better now? Now you don't even have to act like you got it all together. You don't even have to look like you got it all together. Just let your guard down tonight, and let's just make sure we know that we don't all have it together and that the Lord's going to touch some people and help some people, and God's going to help some of you out of the mess you're in. Some of you are in a mess that's been you created it yourself, and you think because of that God isn't going to do it. But I'm telling you, God can bring you out of a mess you made yourself. He, it's not just messes the devil's made. I'm talking about a mess you made yourself. My God can bring you out. Well, glory anyway. Let's go to the word of the Lord for a few minutes. 1 Samuel chapter 14. We'll read two verses of scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 14 verses 6 and 7. 
Amen. Again, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord with you. Amen. Amen. I feel like somebody needs to know this tonight. Is there anybody in the house that before you found the Lord, you were addicted to something? Okay, this is my kind of church. Good. Look around you. Look around you. Keep those hands up if you're not ashamed. All right, people, you hear me today. You can be set free tonight from whatever's bound you up. Some of you are addicted to some stuff, and God wants to set you free. You think you've got to figure it all out before he'll do it. I'm telling you, he's going to set you free tonight. You don't have to know how it's going to work. You just have to be open to it. Be ready for it. Amen. Amen. All right. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, come. And let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be. Everybody say, it may be. It may be that the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, do all that is in thine heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. I want to talk to you for a few minutes from those three words that we repeated. It may be. It may be be. Would you lift your hands to the Lord? Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word. Lord, I pray you would speak to us tonight. Lord, allow us to hear from you. Anoint us to receive your already anointed word. Lord, there's people in this building that need a touch in their life. Lord, there's people here tonight that need the Holy Ghost. There's people here tonight that need deliverance. Lord, tonight we're coming to you. Lord, we ask you to have your way in this place. We ask you to work among us. Lord, I pray that our spirits would be open to you, to what you would do. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him it may be. It may be. And you can be seated. Amen. Israel is in a situation here. They are in, uh, under the rule, if you will, of Philistine. the Philistines at this time. They are living in captivity. The Bible tells us that in all of Israel at this time, there are only two swords. Jonathan has one. His father Saul has the other. Jonathan has reached a point where he has gotten tired of living uh, this way and gotten tired of being under subjection to the Philistines, gotten tired of being under the bondage of the Philistines. The Philistines wouldn't even let them have anybody that could work metal because they were afraid that they would form weapons and that they would uh, cause war. And so they are stuck in this situation. And Jonathan is tired of it. And he turns to his armor bearer, as we read, and he tells his armor bearer, he says, let's let's see here. He said, uh, let's see if the Lord will work for us. What I love about this story is the transparency of what Jonathan says. Jonathan didn't say, I had a dream last night and the Lord told me that he was going to deliver us. He didn't say, a moment ago, an angel was standing beside me and told me, hey, Jonathan, you and your armor bearer go and go to war against these Philistines. Just you two go up and fight them and everything's going to be all right. That's not what happened. Jonathan says... Let's just get together and let's just see. It may be, not it will be, just it might be, it may be that the Lord will work for us. Now, I I don't want to rub your faith the wrong way, but if you'll hang with me for a minute, I think we'll all get on the same page. Faith is not having a guarantee that it's going to work out. If it was, that wouldn't be faith. Faith always requires an it may be. Be. And Jonathan is having an it may be conversation with his armor bearer, saying, I don't know for sure that it's going to happen the way I want it to happen. I don't know for sure that it's going to work out the way I want it to work out. But it just might be that today is the day that God is ready to deliver us from these Philistines. It may be that today is the day that it's going to happen. It may be that it's on a Wednesday night just like tonight. Not a Sunday morning, not a Sunday night, but it just might be that tonight is the night that you could be set free from some bondage and be set free from some things that have had you bound for a long time. I know you want an assurance, and I know you want a 100% guarantee that it's going to work out, but I've come to tell you tonight, sometimes you have to step out on it might be. Now, I'd love for an angel to come up and massage my shoulders every time I felt like the Lord was telling me to do something. But what I found out a lot of times is God wants us to step out on it might be.
be. You, you, you see, there's a lot of things in Scripture that happen, but they simply happen because somebody stepped out on it might be. There was no assurance that Peter was going to walk on that water. All he had was the word that Jesus told him to come, and he had to step out on it. just might be that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. He didn't walk on water, but he walked on the word, and when he walked on the word, he was walking on it might be, and Physics said it shouldn't happen, and gravity said it shouldn't happen, and his neighbor said it shouldn't happen. But he went out on it might be that Jesus really can do what he's always said he can do. It might be that my God is really able to set somebody free. It may be. Tell your neighbor it may be. I like my Bible. My Bible tells me that he is no respecter of persons. That's good. That means he loves me as much as he loves your pastor. I know that's hard to believe. He loves me and you the same amount. He loves me and, and the most wretched sinner. He loves you the, and the most wretched. He, he loves everybody the same. He is not a, some of you are looking at me funny. You've been churchified too much. My God loves everybody. He's no respecter of persons, but my God is a respecter of faith. My God isn't a respecter of persons. He loves everybody the same, but he is a respecter of faith. You don't believe me? Which one of them walked on water with him? The one that said, can I come out there with you? Now, he loved all 12 of those disciples the same, even the one that was going to betray him. He loved all 12 of them the same, but only one walked on the water. Only one did, because one said, it may be. Faith will make you say, it may be. When everybody else is holding on to the side of the boat, just hoping it'll be all right. But faith will just make you let go of the boat and say, it may be. Let, let, me, throw, let me throw this in just for fun, and, I'll, I'll, and we'll move on. Let me tell you, when Peter asked Jesus, can I come to you? Jesus had to say yes. He said, come, come. I'm telling you, all kind of laws of the universe had to be violated in order for Peter to walk on that water and make it to Jesus. Let me tell you this right now. If you want to make it to Jesus, there is nothing that can stop you from making it to Jesus. Jesus will move anything out of the way in order for you to make it to him. If you want the gift of the Holy Ghost, let me tell you tonight, right now. I don't care what the devil's been telling you. I don't care what you've been fighting. I don't care what you're addicted to. It cannot stop you from getting to Jesus. All you have to do tonight is just say, I'm going to make my way to Jesus tonight. There isn't the devil that can stop you. There isn't. There isn't a law of this universe that can stop you. If you want to get to Jesus tonight, you can make it to Jesus tonight. 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 Right now. Tonight. We okay? All right. It may be. I, as I was thinking before service and praying in this beautiful building, I just began to think. You don't get to a church like this, Pastor Watts, without stepping out on. It may be. Woo. Hey, they're saying it. I'm not saying it. I'm just saying. I know. You have to step out on it may be if you're really going to see what God can do. If you always want to operate in the safe, you're never going to see what God can do. If you always want to just stay safe and play it safe, and play, you're never going to see what God can do. That's not where God does the miraculous. God does the miraculous out in it may be. Well, I want to stay on my row. I just, I wondered, I, I was thinking on it tonight. I wonder how many churches have never been planted because nobody would step out on it may be. 
I wonder how many missionaries never went anywhere because they just couldn't step out on it may be. I wonder how many blessings have been missed because the Lord laid something on your heart to do or to give. But you didn't have a 100% guarantee, so you didn't do it because you were needing to operate on it may be. I wonder how many people have missed what God wanted to do in their family because they just couldn't step out on it may be. You see, we like a guarantee. I like a guarantee. I like a guaranteed deal. I like when I buy something that it comes with a guarantee. I like to buy something and know that if it doesn't work, I can bring it back. I love a guarantee. I like a guarantee. I like a guarantee when I buy a car. I like to know that if that car stops working, I got somewhere to bring it to and say, hey, look, I bought this thing from you, and I want a new one. This one ain't working. I want a guarantee. How many of you like a guarantee? I want a guarantee on everything I got. Amen. I like guarantees. I want, I want my stuff to be guaranteed to work. Mm-hmm. I do. But you know what? The other day, it's been a little while now. I'm not going to tell my wife how much I spent, but I went and bought a rod and reel because I like to fish. Anybody like to fish? All right, thank you. All right, I feel better. And you know what? When I bought it, they didn't give me no guarantee I was going to catch any fish. Any deer hunters? You buy that big rifle? They didn't give you no guarantee you was going to shoot nothing. But you went ahead and bought it anyway. You dressed up in camo, painted your face black, sprayed yourself in stuff that makes you smell bad. No guarantee. Went out and sat in the woods. All day. Didn't see nothing. Got up the next day. Still no guarantee. Did it all over again. Missed church. Uh-oh. I'm sorry. I didn't. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mess that up. I was just, I was just throwing that in for free. No guarantee. Didn't shoot nothing all year. You know what they're doing? They're getting ready for next year. We'll do a lot of things without a guarantee. Oh, yeah, we'll fish. Now, I ain't going to get on the women's stuff. I'm just going to talk about us men here for a minute. We fish, we hunt, we do all of that stuff without a guarantee, but we just keep on going out there. Didn't catch nothing. I'm going to go back next weekend. I'm going to try again. No guarantee. But with God, all of a sudden, you want a guarantee. Uh Uh-oh. I think this is enough guarantee right here. Could, could we just say tonight, it might be that he's going to do what he said he's going to do? Anybody in the house got enough faith to just simply say, it might be that my God really can do what he says he's going to do? My, my Bible says, he that observeth the wind... He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. What he's saying is, the fellow that's always waiting on the perfect condition to do what they're supposed to be doing is never going to do what they're supposed to be doing. The one that's waiting on the perfect condition to do what God is calling them out to do is going to be sitting around and waiting their whole life Because as long as you're watching the wind and as long as you're watching the clouds, it's never going to align just right in sowing season and reaping season. There comes a point where you just have to step out and just begin to sow. Begin to sow and say, it may be. It may be. I know it's not all lined up right. I know it's a Wednesday. I know you got problems. I know you had trouble on the job today. But it just might be that tonight is the night. Quit waiting on the perfect service and the perfect atmosphere and the perfect song and the perfect preacher and just step out and say it might be. There's a law in Scripture and in study, and I don't pretend like I'm a theologian, but it's called something like, it's the law of first mention. 
that when something is first mentioned, that's the way it is. Let's say it differently. In your Bible, you can look all over your Bible. You will find one instance of one man walking on water with Jesus. And I promise you, it was not in calm water. The only time that a man walked on water with Jesus was in the middle of a storm. And if you were ever going to get out of the boat and walk on the water, it is not going to be out of your sailboat on a nice clear day. But if you're ever going to walk on the water, it's going to be on a stormy night when Jesus comes and you finally say, it might be. You can keep waiting on everything to get perfect if you want to, but I don't have time to wait on everything to get perfect for God to move in my life. I can't wait any longer for God. Friend, we've got lost family. We've got lost loved ones. We've got a city that's lost. We've got friends that are lost. we got to quit waiting on just the perfect time to invite them. Friend, you need to step out and just say, it might be. Quit waiting on the clouds to clear. Quit waiting on the sun to shine. Step out in the storm into your miracle. Oh, it may be. I'm, 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 I'm going to wrap up here in a minute because God is going to do something here. But I'm going to tell you, I can, I, I've got, uh, uh, I got a list of stories I go down of people that did something for God without a guarantee it was going to work out. All David knew was that he was anointed and that he was a child of the king. He didn't walk out there with 100% guarantee he was going to knock that giant down. He just walked out there in faith saying, I believe my God's better than that out there. See, I I think we've got this idea that all these people had some great assurance before the miracle happened. I would like to uh, propose to you tonight, and, 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 and maybe you could think on it for a little while, and you could think of a few instances in your Bible over and over where people had to step out not knowing really what was going to happen. My Bible tells me those three Hebrew boys that didn't bow. We get up and jump and shout and scream and holler and buck and dance. And, oh, man, three Hebrew boys walking in the fire. My Bible says they said our God is able to deliver us. But then they said, but if not, we're still not going to bow down. You know what they were saying? It might be that he delivers us out of that fire. If not, I'll die never having bowed down to that die. I'd rather die saying it might be than die curled up in a corner, a coward. Never had the boldness, never had the audacity to say that my God is able to do it. It might be that tonight is the night I'm going to step out. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care about what they're saying about me. It might be that tonight is my night. It might be that this year is my year. It might be that right now. Ah, it might, you can stand, 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 stand. It might be, it might be, it might be, it may be. I believe Jonathan knew there's a deliverance coming. And I just think it might be the day that it happens. I just feel like today is the day I'm tired of living the way I've been living. See, I know you've been sanctified and look good and got your tie on and look sharp and all that. But I I know what it's like. I remember, and I know you know, when you first came and you decided, all right, I'm going to get right with God, but I sure don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know how all this is going to work out. I don't know how this is going to work out at home. I don't know what's going to happen in my family. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But you just came with your arms lifted and just said, I surrender. What were you doing? You were starting out with it. It might be. You started this thing with an it might be. Why don't we go ahead and end it? I want to end my life with an it might be. I want to go out saying it just might. Woo. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. They buried Joshua. 
My Bible tells me they buried Joshua on the border of his inheritance, on the border of his property. Joshua was the one that led them into the promised land to take the promise, to take what was theirs, their promise from God, from the Canaanites, and he made sure that he was buried on the border, on the very edge of what was his. What was he doing? He was saying, bury me reaching for just a little bit more. When you bury me, when you put my dead carcass in the ground, put me on the very edge of the end of what God gave me, and I want to be buried reaching for just a little bit more. Oh, friend, I want to be buried on the edge. I don't want to be buried in the middle. I want to be buried reaching for just a little bit more of God. I want to be buried reaching for one more miracle. I, I want to be buried reaching for one more move of God. I want to be reaching for one more soul. I want to be reaching for God. Oh, if you want it, lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. It may be. It may be. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this building? Listening to Brother Adams preach, my mind just got to just literally just going everywhere. I, I could think of a thousand reasons not to say, all right, God. You can do it. Uh huh. <laughs> there you go. I don't know about you tonight on a Wednesday night, but I'd make up in my mind there's not one thing that I've been through, that I'm going through, that I thought about that I've come up against, I wouldn't let one thing come between me and the master. We heard tonight the word pre. It just tonight. I, I've had people say, Brother Smith, I've prayed for that for years. And I've, I've prophesied that a hundred times. Okay. I, I've laid on the floor and squalled and bawled and kicked and hollered and screamed. Okay. I've tried it. Okay. But tonight, it may be. <laughs> tonight, it could be the turning point that God said, I'm going to do it right now. But I need to know, can you believe that I'm able to do it? We're going to do things a little different tonight. I want our altar ministers to come line up real quick. Come on, altar team, come help me. Don't wait around. Just come line up. Look at your neighbor and say it's going to be a little different tonight. Now listen, if this is your first time, welcome to the friendliest church in town. If you've been coming here since we started, welcome to the friendliest church in town. Tonight, everybody is family. Tonight, everybody is going to be touched by the hand of the Lord. Tonight, God is about to answer some things that we've been asking. It just may be. Let's be real. How many, there's something that you would love for God. To handle. Raise your hand. You know what I want us to do? Step out and just come down. Don't start praying yet. Just come on down. We're going to repent in just a moment. You say, really? Yeah. Come on. It may be. Tonight's our night for God to work his miracle working power. Don't worry about it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to think it out. Just come on down. That's right. Just make your way. Just come on down. Just make your way. Here's what we're going to do. Y'all know me. I'm family here. We're going to repent. After we repent, we're going to ask the Lord. 
to fill us with his spirit. We're going to lose things. We're going to call them out by name. We're going to bind them in the outer darkness. And then we're going to tell God whether we need a miracle or we need a healing or it might be a creative miracle. We're going to tell him what we need. And then we're going to speak the word of faith. And when we speak the word of faith, I promise you, the Lord is going to move on our behalf. I want you to get it out of your mind. I don't care if you've prayed for it a thousand times. I want you to get it in your mind right now that he's going to do it. I want you to get it in your spirit right now that it's going to happen. I want you to get it in, I mean, in your heart that it's going to take place. And we're going to believe that when we pray tonight that there's going to be a change in the atmosphere. You believe it? Let's not waste a lot of time. Let's just repent. Say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. I'm sorry, Lord, for everything that I've thought, that I've done, that I've said, and that I've heard. Forgive me, Lord, of things I don't even realize I have done. I give myself 100%. To you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my miracle, for my deliverance, for my healing. Thank you, Lord, for filling me with the gift of the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Now, listen, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to say in just a moment, I lose. And then whatever it is that might be coming against you, you're going to call it out by name. Don't worry. It's just going to sound like a rumble. So don't worry about who's next to you. I'm going to give us about 30 seconds to get everything out. It'll feel like an hour, but it ain't. And then we're going to say, I bind it in the outer darkness. And then we're going to tell the Lord whether we want a healing, a miracle, or we might need a creative miracle. And then we're going to speak the word of faith. And the men and women of God, our altar team, are going to begin to come and lay hands. And I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is going to move on our behalf in this house tonight. Are you ready? Say, I lose. Now tell the Lord whatever it is that's coming against you or whatever you want or whatever you need. That's right. Just go ahead and tell him. You hear the little rumble? Everybody's saying their own thing. Nobody's worried about what the other person's saying. They're saying it right now. God, you're hearing every word that is being spoken. You're hearing everything, that God, that people want. God, you're hearing them as they're speaking it out to you right now. God, we're believing and standing up on that word right now. God, we're going to believe that it's going to happen in the house right now. Come on, we're going to do it about uh, 15 more seconds. Come on, you're telling him right now that it's about to happen. We're believing that it's moving on the behalf, God. We believe, God, that you're going to move on our behalf right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, about 10 more seconds. Come on, we're going to believe right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're hearing everything that is being said. All right, I want you to say, I bind it in the outer darkness. Now, I want you to tell the Lord right now, whether you need a miracle or you need a healing or you need a creative miracle or you need the Holy Ghost or you need to be baptized, tell him what you need right now. Have you told him? It only takes a few seconds. All right, altar ministers, get ready. You're about to lay hands. Here we go. By the authority in the word of God and by the power of the name Jesus, I command you to receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to lay your hands, altar team. Find somebody to lay your hands upon right now by the authority in the word of God and by the power of the name Jesus. Let it happen in this house right now. Let it move up on our behalf right now. Come on, altar team, work your way through that congregation. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, let it happen right now. 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 Come on, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I want you to believe. I want you to pray right now. 
I want you to believe it's going to happen right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, I'm going to put this mic down. I want you to keep praying right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, creative miracles. Say it. Say what you want to see in the name of Jesus. Creative miracle right now in Jesus' name. God, right now, make a way where there is no way. Form a a nerve where there is no nerve in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for revelation. Come on, Come on, receiving the Holy Ghost. Receiving the Holy Ghost. Receiving the Holy Ghost. Speak as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance and the ability to say those words in the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance in Jesus' name. Deliverance from drugs and deliverance from alcohol and deliverance from pills and deliverance from infirmity and deliverance from lust and deliverance from lying and deliverance in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, step out, step out, step out and claim it. It's yours. Yes, you can walk on water. Yes, you can receive. Yes, you can. It's yours. It is yours. It belongs to you. Claim it right now. It's yours. Healing is mine. Health is mine. Deliverance is mine. Salvation is mine. Holy Ghost power is mine in the name of Jesus. Hilamaya Satorabaye. Ikotorabaye. Ikosenamaye Kolorabaye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 He cut a rabbi and a baye. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Heal my mind. Heal my heart. Heal my spirit. Restore my faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, receiving the Holy Ghost over here in Jesus' name. That's it. Go ahead, Darren. Let Jesus have his way. That's it, Lewis. Let him have it. Let him have it, Lewis. In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. Push with me a little bit longer. Pray in the name of Jesus. We still got baptisms tonight. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I bless your name, Lord. I bless your name, Jesus. I bless your name, Jesus. Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise for what he's already done. Come on, give him praise for what he's already done. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. Whatever he did, give him praise. Whatever he did, give him praise. Come on, dare and receive the Holy Ghost in that beautiful, to God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. That's two filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. Come on, give God a high praise. I can't hear you. Give him a high praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. some folks going to be baptized or someone going to be baptized tonight but I'm just going to give that opportunity to anybody 
Anybody in the building, you've never been baptized, you don't know how you were baptized, can't remember being baptized? If you was baptized in sprinkling or you was baptized in infant baptism or Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that never happened in the Word of God. You need to be baptized like they did in the Word of God. That's in the name of Jesus Christ. That old Bible said, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. We got to be baptized in that wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to say it slowly. If you've never been baptized, you need to be baptized. If you don't know how you were baptized, you need to be re-baptized. If you was baptized in sprinkling or infant or Father, Son, and Holy Ghost or Muhammad or Allah or whoever else, you can't find that anywhere in the Word of God. Only place you can find Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in that baptism is Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19 says this, Go ye therefore, comma, and teach all nations, comma. There's no baptism happening there. It's only teaching of the name to come. It says baptizing them in the name of the Father, comma, and of the Son, comma, and of the Holy Ghost with them two little dots. That's not a misprint in the Bible. Them teachers will tell you if we got any teachers in the house, that means something's coming after that. I'm a father and I'm a son, and when I die, I'm going to be a spirit, but my name is David Smith. If I wrote everybody a check tonight for $1,000, it's going to say David and Carlin Smith. Yeah. Account number 297014506 for all you hackers. <laughs> I'm going to sign you a check, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. When you get to the bank tomorrow, the bank's going to say the check's good. The money's in the bank. There's only one problem. There's no name. That banker says you're going to have to cross out the titles and apply the name if you ever want to cash that check. I got a $1,000 check from somebody here, and they signed it Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. My bank just looked at it and shook their head. I still got it. I show people, you ain't going to cash it. If somebody cashes it's because they wasn't doing their job. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. If you can show me that anybody ever got baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or sprinkling, or infant, or Muhammad, or Allah, whoever else you want to say besides the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll give you ten grand before you leave here tonight and pastor a doubling because it never happened. You said, so how should I be baptized? Then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized, every one of you. Not some of you, not a few of you, but, but every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's about to do that in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Come on, they're about to baptize him in Jesus' name. Do I got some rejoicers in the house? Huh? Do I got some rejoicers in the house? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sweet Holy Ghost. Sweet Holy Ghost. Anybody else want to be baptized just like they did in the Word of God? Anybody else want to be baptized just like they did in the Word of God? If you'll raise your hand, we'll get you ready. It only takes about three or four minutes. Anybody else like to be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ? All right, let's give him a hand clap of praise and let's rejoice for a few moments. I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul, just like the Bible says. I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul, just like the Bible says. Well, I've been to the water and I've been baptized. We've got two more going to be baptized. Come on, Captain. Anybody else want to go down in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ? Oh, God. 
being baptized in Jesus' name and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave the utterance. Come on, on a Wednesday night. That's right, on a Wednesday night. He's the same God. Doesn't matter what day, doesn't matter what time, doesn't matter what season. He's a miracle-working God. Is he not? Come on, is he not? Is he not? Come on, he's a prayer-answering God. Woo! Holy Ghost. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Three people being baptized. Three people receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost on a Wednesday night. Come on, can we give him a shout of praise? I'm telling you, outreach is going to be on fire. Holy Ghost is going to be on fire on Sunday. You better get ready, devil. We're about to have, I'm telling somebody, you better get ready. God's going to do great and mighty things in this house. You believe it? Look at your neighbor say, I can't wait for Sunday. Call all your friends, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers. Make sure you hear it outreach. Everybody say outreach. Make sure you hear. We're going to have fun on Sunday. Amen. Everybody say amen. Well, that's a nice start to a revival. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you bring somebody with you Sunday? You may have asked them 27 times. It may be. It may be. You see that powerful word. I mean, here's, here's what I heard. It may be is not an if, it's a when. 
it may be. It's going to happen. Because he said it's going to happen. But it may be tonight. So go ahead and invite him again. Let's bring people to the house of the Lord. It's going to be a great weekend. Uh, everybody remember Saturday outreach, 945 for prayer. And then we will uh, go into the streets, into the apartments, and invite people to fill our buses in Jesus' name. Sunday morning, 10 a.m., Sunday night, 6 p.m. Everybody lift your hands, and we ought to give God one more shout of praise. Woo! Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Clap your hands to the Lord one more time. Go rejoice in the Lord. Take some church cards with you. Invite people to church. Be a great weekend. Praise team at Ensemble. Don't forget practice tomorrow night at 7.